advantage state. This is the part of the game we all look forward to. You've got the opponent on the back foot, and now it's your turn to land hits, deal damage, and take stocks. But if you're facing a good opponent, they're not just going to let you hit them. Just like they've worked on their disadvantage, you have to work on your advantage. Which is why we've put together five ways you can push the advantage even further. Hey guys, Bonk here, and for our question of the day, I want to know which character you think has the best advantage state. Go ahead and tell us in the comments below. By the way, if you're looking to work on your disadvantage state, be sure to check out our videos on how to recover and how to improve your disadvantage state. If you're looking to get better at every part of the game, check out ProGuides.com. You can find even more guides on our website, including master courses written by pros like Esam and MKLeo. We've also recently launched live classes here on our YouTube channel. You can check out these free live classes right here on this very channel, Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications so you know as soon as those classes go live. Before we get into it, let's go over what the advantage state is really quickly. To simplify it, advantage is whenever you push the opponent into a spot where they have less options and a generally worse position. Advantage isn't the same thing as winning or having a lead on an opponent. For example, you have the advantage when you're juggling, ledge trapping, edge guarding, or tech chasing. Naturally, two huge parts of advantage are combos and kill confirms. You should be working on both your combos and kill confirms, but we're not going to include this as part of the tips. At this point, it's just common sense. Now, let's get started. Number 1. Know your limits. Overextending might be the most common way Smash players give up advantage. You'll see it in every level of play from the top 10 to people just picking up a controller. One player has the other cornered and in a rough spot. Instead of waiting patiently for their opponent to try and get out of the corner, they run in, force the issue, lose stage control, and the advantage. Going for that deep edge guard or high risk play can be the smart, calculated play. The difference between overextending and making a big play is knowing your limits. Top players like Mars and MKLeo can go deep off stage to edge guard because they know their limits. You don't just start Smash with that level of knowledge. You've got to play, practice, watch VODs, and learn. Knowing your limits is surprisingly tough because it varies a lot based on context. A character's limit will change based on stage and matchup. For example, Donkey Kong has more kill potential on Pokemon Stadium and even more depending on the weight of his opponent. Dying to a grab from center stage at 63%? That's a tilter. If you don't know your limits, it's very easy to overextend and lose advantage or even get reversal. If you find yourself greeting out for an extra hit that won't land and giving up the advantage, you should focus more on frame traps, less on follow-ups. If you knock a character too far away for a follow-up, you can still chase down their landing, throw out a move they can't beat, force them to air dodge, and then punish the lag on that air dodge. Sometimes you can jump up and throw out a safe aerial to condition the opponent. The next time you jump, you just wait for them to air dodge too early and punish. Follow-ups are great, but at high percents, frame traps and conditioning are often better ways to push the advantage. Forget everything I just said! Number 2. Retreat more often. And by retreat, we mean a tactical one. Don't run to the other end of the stage, just give your opponent a little bit of space. Whether you're pressuring an opponent's shield, reading ledge options, or tech chasing, sometimes you don't want to be right in your opponent's face. If you get right next to an opponent, they have a better chance of landing a hit or rolling away. You're not positioned well to cover as many options, and you're positioned to get hit by more options. If you have your opponent cornered and you whiff an attack, you want to retreat a little bit. The retreat could be a retreating aerial, or it could be a dashback. This will often bait your opponent into a defensive option that you can punish. They might try and up out a shield that whiffs because you used a retreating aerial. They might drop shield, thinking it's their turn to play, giving you time to dash in and land a hit. As the level of play gets higher, running in over and over doesn't press the advantage. It usually loses it. Try more retreating aerials, more dashbacks, and standing roll distance away, especially at ledge. If you stand at roll distance, you're in a good position to cover a roll in, normal getup, and getup attack. All that leaves is roll away. And usually if the opponent rolls away, they're rolling back into the corner and into disadvantage. Speaking of rolls, getups, and defensive options. Number 3. Learn what moves cover which defensive options. 
Ultimate has such a huge amount of variety in the cast, but at least the defensive options area is a bit more uniform. While different characters do have different data and frames for rolls and dodges, a lot of characters are closer than they used to be. That means your character will often have options that can reliably cover the normal defensive options. And by normal defensive options, we mean things players can do after teching, or on the ledge, or even shield. So things like rolling, normal getup, ledge jump, and so on. If you know a good move for covering different options, you can use that to apply pressure and keep opponents on the back foot. A lot of really good characters in the cast can use one move to catch several options. For example, Fox's neutral air has such a long-lasting hitbox that it can catch rolls, jumps, and normal getups from ledge if timed right. Your coverage options can lead to guaranteed kills, at a very low cost too. You've seen this in action if you've ever watched a great Roy or Krom player. Their jab can cover normal getups super well, and leads into a back air that kills at low percents. If the jab whiffs, the end lag is so low that it's much safer than whiffing a smash attack. Alright, we've had a few study-heavy tips, so here's an execution-based one. Number 4. Master Runoff Aerials and Dropping to Ledge this one sounds really simple, but if you're newer to the game or just not that practiced, it's easy to overlook movement on and around the ledge itself. However, learning how to move around the ledge can open new ways to push the advantage. Two relatively easy things you can learn are runoff aerials and dropping to ledge. A runoff aerial is when you run straight off the ledge to attack instead of jumping off the ledge. This is a pretty easy mechanic to learn. The main trick is waiting until your character has just left the stage to attack. For as simple as this is, it opens up a ton of simple edge guarding options and prevents your opponent from recovering at certain angles. When you do a runoff aerial, you keep your jump so you can drift further out to hit an opponent and jump back to recover safely. This is a great way to catch opponents moving horizontally to the ledge and push them to recover high or low instead. Number 5. Learn how to pressure and approach shield. In Smash Ultimate, shielding is much weaker than in Smash 4. However, pressuring shield isn't as easy as it looks. A lot of newer players attack a shield with a fast approaching aerial, a cross up, or a grab. These approaches can be good, but a lot of characters can beat them by being patient in shield or by calling out the grab with a spot dodge. Good shield pressure comes from moves that are hard to punish out of shield, or moves that beat shield without giving an opponent time to react. Some characters have grabs with great shield pressure. Palutena has great grab ranges, which adds to her shield pressure. Her pivot grab in particular has crazy shield pressure by the ledge. When we get back on stage, our instinct is to shield. Palutena punishes that hard. Remember that there are lots of kinds of grabs too, so your character may have certain grabs you should go for over others. There's shield grabs, standing grabs, dash grabs, and pivot grabs, and they can all have different ranges and data. If your character has a great dash grab but bad standing grab, you just want to input a little dash before the grab. If you want to improve your grabs as approach options, give boost grabbing a try. To boost grab, you just input a dash attack, then quickly input a grab before the dash attack can load. You'll get a little boost to your grab, effectively adding distance. You can boost distance even further by roll boost grabbing. You input a dash, a shield, and then press A, but it only works out of initial dash. As for attacks, good attacks on shield have low end lag and high shield stun. That means they keep the opponent trapped in shield stun, but don't keep you trapped in lag. Some characters like Ken and Ryu have so much shield stun that they can break shields with their normals. A well-spaced disjoint can also do very well against shields. Since it now takes 11 frames to drop shield, a lot of characters aren't fast enough to punish a hit if it's out of range if they're out of shield options. A well-spaced move can even trick an opponent into whiffing an out-of-shield option, giving you a free punish. And that's about it. There are a ton of other ways to improve your advantage state. This video just gives five relatively simple things to think about and build on as you play. To recap, those five things are 1. Know your limits and avoid overextending for follow-ups you can't hit. 2. Retreat more often by using dashbacks, retreating aerials, and short strategic movements that prevents counterattacks and tricks opponents. 3. Learn how to cover defensive options by figuring out which of your character's moves do best to stuff out rolls, normal getups, and jumps. 4. Master runoff aerials and ledge dropping, that way you can edge guard more effectively. And 5. Learn how to pressure shield by improving your grabs and finding moves with good shield stun, low lag, or strong disjoints. 
It'll take some time and effort to work all of this into your game. But if you stick to it, you'll start closing stocks earlier, keeping opponents on the back foot longer, and winning more games. And if you want more tips for all stages of the game, you know where to go, ProGuides.com. Head over and use tools to your advantage.